Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we have the opening prayer, please, by Apostle Winnie Tishbrule, please? If you're on the stage, can you come on, please? Apostle Winnie? Okay. Okay, maybe. All right, maybe we just go ahead and take the prayer um, in the absence of Apostle Winnie uh, uh, Shirubla. Okay, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this wonderful time in your presence. We thank you for each and every one of us tonight, and we just trust you, oh God, for your faithfulness. We trust you for your love and your mercy. And we ask, oh God, that as we proceed in this part of the service tonight, the Lord, that you would take preeminence, Amen. and Lord, that your name will be glorified. Amen. Lord, oh God, we know that, oh God, that you are already with us, but we just trust the Lord, you continue to be with us all through this program. In Yeshua's mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Can we have the praise and worship team, please? The Nozana Family Choir, RSA. Uh, South Africa. Okay. The worship team from uh, South Africa. Sh shalom, shalom. Can you hear shalom. us? Shalom, we can hear you. Awesome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Let's get together and feel all right. One love. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you Amen. for that radiation. Thank you very much. Can we have the Foundation Ministry Choir Island? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Our song this evening is Peace Be Still. So may you experience the peace of the Lord as we hear it singing. Thank you. God bless. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the way. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be able to talk. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, choir. Peace be still. God bless you. God bless you. 
we move straight away to the Alius family choir. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. We're going to be singing, I have found a friend in Jesus. Beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. very much for that god bless thank you amen amen, amen. we thank god for your life uh, the aliu family you've always been a blessing and the lord will continue to make you a blessing in jesus name amen, amen. amen. we're going to jump forward there now very quickly and it's a privilege and honor to uh, have the global governing council you know be a blessing to us tonight as well uh, so we'll be uh, kickstarting the this aspect by inviting our beloved uh, 
uh, Pastor Jeremiah, the, the whipping prophet. <laughs> and and uh, my beloved sister, Pastor Liz. Um, you can be rest assured you're going to go home here mm. tonight with something yes, yes, definite. Yes, yes. Let's welcome the two of them to the microphone. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. It has been such a glorious uh, time before the presence of the Lord. It's just so wonderful. And so uh, Pastor Jeremiah is going to just deliver to us tonight, uh, but it has been so glorious. The diverse um, culture, the diverse languages, songs, it has been glorious and a blessing. So we just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I, I was sharing with my wife. I showed her my note. I said, everything has been preached. And uh, that we are still chewing on Dr. Cos's release. Often now, so I, I have not gotten over that. Then the short note, I said, maybe I will just uh, share that. Prophet Oloma came and released it. I just showed my wife, see, his presence is what will give us rest. So I, let me just go there and say, greetings and so on. But then the Lord reminded me there's something I can emphasize and just repeat. Because you can repeat something and it gets clear. So I want to repeat something, which you will forgive me. It may be a repetition. I have got one enemy. I don't know if you have that enemy. The enemy I want to call is the enemy that has hindered rest. That's an enemy that has kept me. That's an enemy that keeps the church. I was looking, what is that enemy? The Bible calls it unbelief. The Bible says, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Underline, profit them. Why? They did not mix it with faith. They did not believe it. So it's possible that I have received all the word through Dr. Kurz. I said, no, it was for someone else. No, it was from someone else. In fact, how I wish that brother, that sister had this. No, it is for me. The world will not profit you if you don't believe it for yourself. You can believe it some, for someone else, but if you don't believe it for yourself, you will remain the same. And that is why I said they did not enter, it did not profit them because of unbelief. So there's one enemy the church has now. That's one enemy that will stop me. That's one enemy that can stop you. That's one enemy that can stop the whole assembly from entering into that rest. The Bible calls it unbelief. Then you say, is it just believing? No, it's not just a mental belief. This unbelief is gross. This unbelief is big. Beloved, do you know why the people did not receive the word? There may be several reasons, but there may be some reasons why you have not received the word. I didn't say you have not received. I have received, I know you have. But there may be some reason why you are still toiling, why you cannot quickly receive it. One may be the reason why they did not receive Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 13, 53 to 58, do you know why they did not receive Jesus Christ in his hometown? The Bible said because of that, he did not perform many miracles. Because of that, he left them. Because of that, they remained. But why were they not? Why did, not, why did they not receive? They were too familiar with him. They were too familiar. So Dr. Cosma is somebody we listen to every year. Oh, Dr. Cosma is somebody, even my own general overseer. But I know Dr. Cos. So the familiarity could stop us from receiving. But thank God that I believe everyone here has received and receiving. So familiarity could stop us and could make us not believe the word. Remember, this enemy unbelief could go, could be shown in different ways. It's possible because they say, we know him. Jesus, they say, is this not the son of Joseph, Mary? The brothers and sisters are here. So they could not believe him. They were too familiar with him. Many of us, what hinders us from receiving from people is that we are too familiar with them. Oh, yes, it is that brother, that sister again. Oh, he's talking again. She's talking again. No, 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 no. Separate the brother from the message. Separate the minister from the message and let the message bless you. 
is the message should bless us. And sometimes we allow what we know about people to hinder us from being blessed. And many of us we have, sometimes I found out that unbelief is because we have some critical spirit, some judgmental spirit. In fact, we want to analyze the credential of the preacher before we allow the word to bless us. Some of us, if we do not know the doctorate, if we do not know his background, we do not know how much qualification he or she has, our, the word will not just be for us. We want to, when the person is delivering the word, we are trying to analyze that, analyze his credential, analyze that credential, analyze them too familiar, and that hinders our, our receiving the word. Jesus, when they saw his background, they said they knew him too much. They were not believed. They were not receiving. They did not receive him. Unbelief stood in the way. So, beloved, it's important for us to realize that the word is coming for us, to us. Jesus said, you know, when Jesus was addressing the Pharisees, there was something Jesus said in Matthew 23, 1 to 4. For those of us who will not receive the word from somebody because we have analyzed his credential, because we knew him by the flesh, just like Apostle George was saying, sometimes we reject our blessing because of our flesh thinking. Sometimes because of what we know about the person, what we know about the person, we don't receive from the person. Do you know what? Jesus was telling them in Matthew 23, 1 to 4, don't mind the Pharisees and start to see. Receive their word because of their position but don't do like they do. Because there are people who God wants to bless you. When God gives you a blessing in a place that seems dirty, take the blessing. It does not matter the vessel. But one thing is sure, he said, be, be like your father in heaven. Don't be like them, but do not judge them. Leave judgment with God. There are many of us, I have realized God has dealt with me in that area. There are many areas with judge ministers. We are so critical. We are so judgmental. As a result, we, don't, we are not blessed. As a result, we will never receive from them because we are so judgmental, because we are so critical. Men, oh, yes, you can do very well, better than someone else. But let me tell you, that person you can do better than can be a blessing to you. And that is why the Bible said they did not enter the rest because of unbelief. Unbelief is a hindrance. Unbelief is an enemy. Someone may be saying, oh, oh yes, because when, when Dr. Lechuko was talking about everything, do you know about rivalry, competition, comparison, all those things, they come from unbelief because if we really believe the word of God, we will stick to the word of God. We will hear the word of God. Do you know what unbelief is? Unbelief, I call unbelief a robber. Unbelief is a robber. Unbelief is a thief. Unbelief can rob you of your peace. Unbelief can rob you of your healing. Oh, yes, the sickness we have. Unbelief says nobody has ever been healed from here. But if we believe the word of God, we can enter the rest. We can receive our healing. Many of us are not healed because we have taken statistics of the medical doctors. We have taken the, the, the statistics of those who have died of that sickness. And that is what we have believed. But we have not believed the word that says, by his stripes we are healed. So the unbelief is why many of us are still not healed physically. The unbelief could be why many of us are missing our success. You are down, but you do not believe that you can get up. There are many of us in the Christendom there are many believers who are down. They don't believe they will ever get up. Come on, unbelief will rob you of your getting up. Unbelief will rob you of your success. Unbelief will rob you of your breakthrough. Unbelief will rob you of your peace in God. And even right now, there's somebody who unbelief is the only thing hindering you. It's not that you have fallen into adultery or fornication. It's not that you are lying. But the fact that you do not believe you can rise. The fact that you do not believe you can break through. The fact that you do not believe that you can ever get over it. That is unbelief. And the Bible says they did not enter the rest. Because of them believe, they did not mix the word they had with faith. So let us not fall into unbelief. As we hear this word concerning your life, concerning your ministry, concerning your whatever you are, don't give up. Believe that you can come out of it. Believe that you can have breakthrough. And I tell you now, finally, Jesus said, if you had been sick, I would have healed you. But now I go, you die in your sickness. Do you know what? They did not want to receive him. They did not. But brethren, let us go now. We can be healed. Jesus is saying, come. Come, let us reason together. And I will give you peace. Come, even if you are seen as red as scarlet, 
Come unto me, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. May the Lord give us rest. May we believe his word. May we move with him. This year, let us deal with unbelief. Let us cry out, Lord, help me. Help my unbelief. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, man of God. Thank Hallelujah. you so much for that. That's very powerful. That's very powerful. I told you there's no way you will listen to uh, to, to Pastor Jeremiah. You won't, you know, you won't get, uh, you know, touched by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to continue. Thank you for that. We're going to move on. Uh, and we'll be calling our big daddy all the way from Detroit, uh, United States of America, uh, Apostle Fred and Pastor Kathleen Harris. Uh, over to you, sir. You are muted. I get it right one day. <laughs> um, it just, uh, um, I've been having problems with my computer. I'm running back and forth between two. And so much beautiful information has been shared from the first day, as usual. It's like, I can't have any kind of picture in my mind what heaven will be like after what I've heard this weekend thus far. You know, as I just listened to the different speaker, speakers that I was able to hear, the singing, but what gets me the most is the spirit, the spirit of this gathering. And there's people from all walks of life, all different kinds of positions, intellect, uh, positional jo job wise and whatnot. But there's a tremendous strength and a unity that is harmonized by the spirits of those that are present. And it's like, yeah, I, I have missed some of the things that were said, but inside it's like you haven't missed anything because what you sense permeating in you and in this environment is the unity and the love that has been developed in these people, which I consider myself to be a part of. You know, God has a season for each one of us for different things, but he also has a season for the body of Christ. And I believe that we have pretty much ran out our season that is the traditional church. And one of the reasons why we are experiencing uh, this COVID-19 is because no matter how you look at it, there's nothing you can do. We can listen to the medical terminology. Uh, you need to get a shot. I've recently come across people that took the shot and died. So I'm saying, man, what, what works? What really works? And it's like, nothing works. You are in a place now where you have to know me. And we cannot know him through disbelief. We cannot know him through lack of examples. What is before us now is you have to depend upon the leading of the Holy Spirit, which is how it's been from the very beginning, although it has been overlooked in some circles for different reasons. But it all goes back to the very beginning. You got to know me. And the only way we can know him is to be taught by his word by his spirit and those that will allow his love 
and personality to flow through them to be a demonstration to others and draw us into his love. You know, I guess with me, uh, I like to be deep and intellectual. I'm old enough to be that, but uh, I'm simple. And with me is either yes or no. Uh, and you may say, well, that's kind of uh, a rash or, or, or curt. But to me, there's no in between. Either you're in or you're out. You know, I was on heroin 17 years. I knew one thing. If I put that needle in my arm with some dope, I change. And it wasn't for good. But that was one way I learned about the absolutes. And I know it's the same with the Lord. I don't need a whole bunch of talking. I don't need a whole bunch of debating. I don't need a whole bunch of religiosity because I lived a full life of sin, self-destruction. And because I'm not in that life anymore, whatever he says, I'm gonna do it. And I do do it. I have issues, but I know one thing, his word is more powerful than the dope. It always works. It always works. Last night was a real hard night for me. Uh, I got up early. Well, this morning I got up and I wasn't, I, I wasn't listening like I needed to. And I got on daybreak for the king on my phone instead of being tuned into the computer. And I couldn't get on for about 10 minutes. So after the 10 minutes were up, I, I said, well, maybe they're not on. But all after that, I was laying down. And I was just feeling so bad. I'm saying something's wrong, something's wrong. All of a sudden, a rash of thoughts started coming to my mind. All the negativity that I had been in, in my life started coming to me strong strong and I couldn't stop it. I'm saying, what is this? What is this? Finally, it's almost like, well, you might as well give it to it. You can't stop it. But I hung in there for a minute. And then all of us, I was trying to pray, trying to pray. And I started praying and slowly it began to lift. Finally, I went downstairs and I said, I've never felt like this before. This is, this is terrible. I've dealt with death situations and whatnot never like this. And I put my head on the kitchen table and I said, Lord, he said, when you couldn't get on the phone, fear came in. And like the word talks about how Satan works, he comes in unaware, he eases in into all kinds of situations which you may never expect or be looking for him. But I had opened myself up to fear unconsciously and I felt laws. And he said, rebuke the fear, rebuke the fear. So I begin to rebuke the fear. Everything began to clear up. I could feel the power of the Lord coming back in me. I begin to feel strong again. I begin to say, I gotta get back on. I gotta get caught up for what I missed and whatnot. But what I got out of the, that whole thing was He's always there for us. And there are people that are listening right now. And this is one of the reasons why I guess I'm sharing this. You're not in the place where you need to be. You got to get simple. You got to get simple. And some of you might call it stupid because you can't intellectualize. You can't religify it. Getting simple is yes or no. If it works, it works. If it's not working, why? Why? He'll tell you why. He'll show you why. He'll show you how to change it. To that woman, you feel like your heart's going to bust wide open. You've prayed and prayed. You've fasted. 
You even debated somewhat with some of your friends. But the Lord is saying, I'm the answer. Get simple. Get simple. Getting simple is, I know you can do it. Maybe you haven't done it. But I know you can. Father, right now I speak to the hurt in her heart. Not only to her, Lord, but to those, Lord Jesus, that are battling. We're at this gathering. Tremendous word is going forth. A tremendous anointing is here. Father, help them that are in need to get out of themselves. Expecting it to go a certain way. Wanting it to go a certain way. You're the only one that knows the way it should go. You're the only one that knows why, where, how. But most of all, Lord, we must realize that you love us. And Lord, you told me when I got off drugs, for 17 years, Satan was your God. And he ruled and controlled you. You do whatever you had to do to get high. If you didn't, you could die. You were a slave to Satan. And Satan's reward for you was death. He said, but when you came to me, you gave your life to me. And I told you, I own you. And it was hard for you to, to accept that. He said, but once you accepted it, I told you, I own you, but my reward for you is eternal life. So no matter how things go for me in life, Lord, it's always going to be good because you love me. Love never fails. Love is always consistent. To those that don't seem to have the answer and you're muddling it around in your brain and in your head, put it to the side. He loves you. He loves you. And because he loves you, he's going to make what needs to happen, happen. Lord, I watch my four grandchildren get killed. I watch my son die. Lord, I've had people die in my arms. Father, I know one thing. You didn't do it. But Lord, in the long run, you said, and I'm still waiting, 83 years old. You said all things work together for the good of those that love you and have been called according to your purpose. I believe that. No matter how bad it gets or appears to be, I believe you, Lord. I believe your word. I ain't got a whole bunch of scriptures and all that, but I see in life, you are a man of your word. You are a God of love. And you have placed me in this organism over 20 years ago. And I see that love continuously working and working and working through Brother Kaz, through Apostle George, through Apostle, through, excuse me, Pastor Grace, and others, Lord, that are in the ministry. I thank you for allowing my wife and I to be a part of your ongoing love that is increasing and spreading around the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you to all those that are apart, Lord, and keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Apostle, thank you so much for those uh, beautiful words. I mean, it's... Uh, it's so good to learn from a man like yourself. You know, 83 years is not a joke. You know, mm -hmm. we, 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 you've done very greatly, I must say, and we celebrate you. I'm Hallelujah. sorry, we celebrate you. you, you 
and we trust God to, you know, to, to spare your life for us because we still want to enjoy more of you and Amen. see more of you. And uh, I trust that all, all of us are learning from you because Amen. the Bible said the older, the younger should learn from the older. So we thank God, you know, you've told us so much of faith there. And one key thing that I got there from what you're saying there, it's get simple, get simple. Sometimes we complicate things. We make things so bad, you know, mm. but thank you for those words. God bless you. Really good, sir. Um, we're going to go further and then uh, we're going to have a time of worship there now. And we're going to call upon uh, our beloved minister, Minister Uzo, all the way from UK there. If you want to just uh, go ahead and bless us, please. And bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That word was sobering, that word was timely, and it was so heart piercing. Amen. I'm just gonna sing a song titled It Is Well. Grand the earth has quaked before, it's moved by the sound of his voice, and seas that are shaking and stirred. Can be carried and broken for my word. Cause true we roam, true we roam, my eyes are on you. And true we roam, true we roam, it is well. True we roam, true we roam, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. Far be it for me to not believe, even when my eyes can't see, that this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. Cause true we roam, true we roam, my eyes are on you. True we roam, true we roll, it is well. True we roam, true we roam, my eyes are on you. It is well, it is well. So let go my soul and trust in him the waves and wind still knows his name so let go my soul and trust in him the waves and wind still know his name so let go my soul and trust in him, the waves and wind still know his name. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The Bible says the Lord will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him Amen. because he trusted in him. And that's Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thank you so much. Even as we trust in the Lord, we know it is well with our soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, it's going to be a time of offering there now. And uh, no, sorry. Okay, so we're going to take one more song. And I think we do it this way. We just package our offering. So I'm going to get, uh, we'll do it the other way around. So we get uh, 
uh, the, the admin guys to put up the offering uh, slides. And we invite Pastor Ola and Pastor Dupe Adebanjo to take the offering. And, um, um, and then uh, we get a prophetess uh, Ose. Ose to do the worship afterwards. Uh, uh, Pastor Ola and, uh, and the wife, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for this session. Um, I know it is, it's, we know it is the time for offering, but we just want to read this verse to precede the moment of the offering. Um, that's the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. And it says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not be hither, but water the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Uh, by the grace of God, we thank God for the powerful men of God, the ministers of God, our parents in the Lord that the Lord has been using to bless us. We have been blessed specifically to great measure. But this time, the Lord has used them to sow into our lives. We also want to sow into the ministry to be able to impact the lives of others positively as have been announced previously. So if you belong to any of these regions shown on the screen, whether it is South Africa, South Africa, whether it is in the UK, whether it is in Ireland, if you can please take note of the specific details so that you can make the offering to the specific amount local to your area. And the Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I know that the technical guys are trying to make it fast by scrolling. If that is too fast for you, you can use your device to take the screenshots of the account details so that you have it, even if the screenshot disappears or the, the, screen, the, the technical team take it away, you can go back to your screenshot and then use that to make the offering. It's good to sow into the kingdom and the Lord will also sow great blessings of love, peace and rest into your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we want to quickly pray on the offering because we have a short slot for this offering moment. We want to quickly pray on it. So that as many as are giving, we can also bless the offering for your sake. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment of giving to the cause of the kingdom. We thank you because you are the giver of everything. You have even promised that you are giving us rest, which is a great measure of giving. Daddy, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as many as have been privileged to give this moment, you will bless in return, even according to the promise of your word, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over in Jesus' name. Amen. IMF will expand greatly, Amen. and there shall be no limitation to what you're going to do in this body this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Bless you. In Jesus' name, we have just prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. Uh, we're just going to quickly, you know, just uh, to celebrate. So often, oftentimes when we give, we just give, you know, it's good to give with joy. So yeah. let's uh, thank you, get Jesus. Uh, <laughs> we thank you for this wonderful conference. Open day. Amen. So let's Amen. get um, um, Prophetess Osa Bonnet uh, all the way from USA uh, to just minister in words there very quickly, please. I mean, in songs, I mean. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this wonderful conference. Open gates. Worship God wherever you are. It's time to praise the almighty God. Hallelujah. I'm going to. Your name, hallelujah, glory be to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hakuna Jesu kana no ku denga rakadaro zitarompo ne yeah. 
Amen. I think we're having some technical uh, issue there. Uh, maybe uh, once the the, uh, the line or the, the you know it's better better we might come back to that. Uh, we're just going to uh, move uh, quickly, um, and I'm sure we have our co-presenter um, uh, moderator in the house there, um, Apostle uh, Sunday and uh, Pastor Gladys E. Uh, if you want to come on board, and my wife, my, my wife and I, myself can just uh, step back a bit and allow them to do the rest of the job. God bless mm -hmm. you. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, uh, our beloved pastor, Pastor Kazim, and a lot BC, Ogusha Kino, the way from Ireland. I can confirm that that has been a very excellent moderation. And at least we've been able to save some, uh, 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 up to about eight minutes. We've saved beautiful eight minutes. Thank you for helping us to manage the time. And right away, we'll be going now across to, Ni to Nigeria. Um, why we'll be calling a, a member of the Global Governing Council, uh, Pastor Tina Uwagu, who is representing the IMF Africa, a member of the Global Governing Council, Pastor Tina Uwagu. Um, can we just uh, kind of spotlight her as we get ready to receive from her? Praise the Lord. Happy New Year to everyone. I want to thank the Lord for bringing us into a new year, the year 2022. I want to thank him for all his mercies, his faithfulness towards us, his children. And I equally want to thank the Lord for bringing us into this year's conference, Open Gates Conference. And uh, I know the Lord is going to do great and awesome things for us in this uh, open gates. I want to use this opportunity to thank the international president, Apostle George and Pastor Grace Akalono. May the Lord continue to use you to bless his people all over the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Our team for this year is entering God's rest. And I just want to use a psalm that we are very conversant with. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. We are very conversant with this psalm. But I want to let us know today that this psalm is a typical example of one who has entered into God's rest. When you look at it, you will see the total reliance of this person on God. He's a person that is not moved by situations surrounding him. I want us to quickly look at that psalm. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. It begins, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is a person who has come to the knowledge of who God is in his life. Who has come to have total reliance and dependence on God. He said, I shall not want. He is not bothered about scarcity. He's not bothered about what is happening around him. Even in our world today, we see that there is chaos everywhere. People don't know where the next meal is coming from. People are being relieved of their jobs. There are so many, many worries in our world today. But this same person says, I shall not want. He's rest assured. He's resting on God that he must surely provide. No matter what happens, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he further said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He makes me to lie. He takes me where, where I will have no fear. 
where I will not have any worries, any anxiety. He makes me to lie down comfortably there. And he leaves me beside still waters, not troubled waters. This person is resting on God, resting in him, relying on him. He said, he restores my soul. No matter the turbulence that I'm going through, no matter the challenges of life, no matter what has, you know, confronted me in life, he restores my soul. He does not allow my soul to be destroyed. He does not allow my peace to be taken away from me. He said, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And look at verse 4. He said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This is someone who is totally, totally rested in God. He said, for thou art with me. You are with me. I need not fear. I need not get troubled. I need not be filled with anxiety. For you are with me. Your rod and staff, they are my comfort. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil and my cup run out of that. He is resting on God. He is trusting God. Brethren, I hope in this 2022, no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, we should know that God has prepared a very beautiful table before us. And he has anointed our head with oil and our cup will run over. We will not lack. We will never lack. We will never lack this 2022. And to end it all, he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Brethren, I wish we will be in the shoes of this person that wrote this up. And know that resting in God is the best place to be. He said, whosoever that has entered God's rest ceases to walk. This person is an example of one who has ceased to walk. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm. Amen. You mute yourself. Amen. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. That is really, really, really excellent. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You couldn't get it wrong once you are relying totally on God. It was an excellent message. Once again, reminding us and reassuring us that the God we serve is a reliable, a dependable God. The God who is all sufficiency. Ah, we believe that this message will take us through the year by the grace of God. Amen. Once again, we just go straight now to call our very beloved uh, uh, member of the, go uh, the Global Governing Council, beloved Bishop Stafford Umwagu, also representing Africa, Bishop Stafford, all the way from Nigeria. Hallelujah. Bishop Stafford. You are all welcome you. to this year 2022 IMF Open Gate Conference. I want to appreciate every one of you who made out time to be in this conference. God bless you. Special appreciation goes to the international our president and the wife i mean apostle george akalono and also i appreciate the presence of the chairman of the governing global governing council and all members of global governing council global executive council all national presidents and all directors i want to say god bless you and every member from all over the world watching 
this great event. I'm taking you down to the scriptures as regards to the theme of the conference, which is enter his rest. I'm taking my text from the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. I read, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who was Jesus calling on? This world with God's good intention, creating the world creating man to take charge. Unfortunately, somewhere along the line, the enemy came in and robbed man of this glorious opportunity. Robbed man of this glorious pleasure satisfaction robbed man of basically everything robbed man of the glory of god and man sinned and all fell short of the glory of god and i want to let you understand that from that time man became a slave instead of a partner with the enemy, the devil. Man became a slave and entered into slave level. And eventually what nothing before the devil who has usurped his authority, who has staged a coup de d'etat by robbing Adam of everything Adam had. And that's why he has the God during the, one of the temptations to tell Jesus. In a twinkle of an eye, he showed Jesus the whole world. He showed it to Jesus. He showed Jesus the powers. He showed Jesus the glory, the wealth, name it. And said, Jesus, if you could only bow down and worship me, these things would be yours. For they have been handed over to me, and whosoever I will I give it to. Of course, Jesus knows more than him. And Jesus gave him the word. But what am I trying to say? As a result of the spiritual devastations, man became a slave and entered into slave labor, being tortured, being afflicted, being tormented, and man, what basically nothing to the devil than a slave. Man, even a chicken in the poultry farm is better than man as far as the devil is concerned. There was destructions. Man decided to destroy himself. Man will label and label and label and yet achieving little or nothing. And man, whatever he receives is taken away from him in one way or the other. Man has to lick the foot of Satan in order to get anything. If you can want, if you can remember what happened in the days of Hezekiah when the king, um, when the enemy 
came speaking to the people of Israel and said, don't listen to Hezekiah. Look, the gods of other nations did not, did not save them. How do you think your own God will save you? Hezekiah is lying to you. Listen, if only you will come out. If you will come out unto me with a present, and enter into an agreement with me, I will allow you drink your drink. I will allow you eat your fruit. He didn't say his own fruit, the devil. He said, it's yours. It's yours. He has confiscated them. He cannot create water. He cannot create anything. God has created all that needed to be created. And that was the bet. But the sky told the people, don't answer him a word. Just keep quiet. And what am I trying to say? That's what happened these days. And that's what the devil offered to Jesus. If only you can bow down and worship me. Wow. I will give you all these things. In such kind of situation, man was blindfolded. He could not see. Man was turned to darkness and the world gross darkness like Paul rightly pointed out in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 8. And what the, the Bible says, the Bible says, in the time past, you were darkness. He didn't say you were inside darkness. He said you were darkness itself. But now you are light. Walk as children of light. So you can see the predicament of man. And God in his mercy decided to send his dear son who came into this world. Came with two names. Jesus. To save us from our sins. Emmanuel. To be with us. And these things cannot work out. Until. Something is done. Man became restless. Man full of anxiety. Sleepless night. Groaning in, pain, in pains. A prisoner. A prison of hope, a prisoner, a prison of war. It was horrible for man. And Jesus, God did not like those he created in his own image and likeness to go that way. And what did our God do? God now sent his son. And that son declared to all and sundry. All ye who labor and are heavy laden, come to me, I will give you rest. There is a change of dispensation. And God announced this years back before Jesus was born. In the days of Zechariah, and the word of God came and said, it's no more by power nor by might, but by the spirit of God. It's no more by power nor by might, but by the spirit of God. But how can man do that? Man, all his life, has known pain, griefs, labor, hustling, struggling, hustling, struggling. That's what man has spent his time doing. Right now, what happened? Jesus said, come to me. I will give you rest. You are entering into a spiritual dispensation. That's what God is trying to let us understand. 
when we receive our Lord Jesus Christ, we have moved from the physical to the spiritual dispensation. And in the spiritual dispensation, nearly all that happened in the physical dispensation happened in the spiritual dispensation. And our God and our maker decided to recreate. He decided to give us a second best. He decided to give us a new creation. And what did he do? He said, we are to be born again. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. And behold, we are born of the flesh and the devil has taken over. And all our lives have been that of struggling and suffering and regrets. And Jesus came to change the status quo. That as you are born by Adam, which made every one of us sinners, you are to be born again by the last Adam, Jesus Christ, who is the Spirit, who is the Lord from heaven. As we bore the image of the first Adam and became flesh, we need to bear the image of the last Adam to become spirit. That that is born of the flesh is flesh. That that is born of the spirit in spirit. And the Bible said, behold, the word of God said, behold, he that is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are become new. That's why. Right. So we are to enter Christ's rest. Immediately we are born again. When we answer this call and give him all the very burdens we are carrying, And he takes us in and give us rest. He allows us enter his rest. And rest ceases to work. Ceases to labor. The Bible made us to understand this fact. The fact that he that enters the rest ceases to labor. He ceases to labor. Why? For me, that is why I like, I like to define Christianity as uh, um, man resting, God walking. Man resting, God walking. He say you have labored so much. You have troubled yourself so much. Let me now allow you to enter into my rest so that you can rest. So that you will seize. You will seize from that expenditure, from that exertion of physical and spiritual efforts. You will rest. I will give you rest. I will do the job for you. I will speak for you. I will pray for you. I will heal you. I will deliver you. Just rest. But it's unfortunate that those of us who have entered this rest, rest you know, did not know what the rest is all about. We did not know what the rest is all about. And that was a very serious omission. We did not know what the rest is all about. We, are, we claim to be in the rest of God, 
Yes. We don't sleep at night. We think how to make ends meet. We think how to eat. We think the dress to wear. We think how can we get this? How can we get that? Sleepless night. When he said you will lie down at night, you will sleep and your sleep shall be sweet. We don't have sweet sleep. A good number of us who have entered this rest. No. We live in fear. And he asks you the question. I did not give you the spirit of fear. Where did you get it from? I gave you the spirit of boldness. Where did you get it from? Those who are resting. Those who have entered the rest. They don't, they don't, they don't have sleepless nights thinking about this, worrying about that, being disturbed by one need or the other. And that is why Jesus, what did he say? He said, look, don't think of what to eat. Don't Think of what to wear. Don't think of what to drink. Your father in heaven who is at work knoweth what you need. Rather seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. These things will come on their own accord. If you could rest I allow Jesus to do that. But no, we hustle. In the, in the course of hustling, in the course of struggling, we fall into a lot of mistakes, a lot of error. We lie when we are not supposed to lie. We are children of truth. But because you want to make it by yourself, then you get yourself messed up. You get yourself messed up. No, that's not the plan of God. God have told you, he that enters rest cease to labor. What is labor? Labor could be defined or as an exertion or expenditure of spiritual and physical efforts. No effort. Relax. God is in charge. And that is why our faith, our assurance of who we are in Christ is shaking. Because resting will allow God to work on your behalf. And by God working on your behalf, you will develop experience. And that experience will give you the confidence on which your faith in Christ Jesus will rest on. He came again, he said, don't talk. Those who have entered rest, don't talk. They don't talk. That's why we have some who are now gossips, who are slanderers in the house of God because they talk at their own time. They never listen to the master to talk only when the master is talking. Glory be to God. When the master has finished talking, they will talk. What will they say? They will echo what the master has said. And the book of Mark, the book of Mark. I want you to turn with me to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, we are going to look at chapter 13. And let's see verse 11. 13, 11. What is 13, 11 saying? 13, 11 says, And when they shall lead you and deliver you up, Take no thought before, beforehand, what ye shall speak, neither do ye 
premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speaketh, but the Holy Ghost. But every day you crack your head, talking nonsense, talking what God has not given you to talk. Jesus said the son can do nothing. It is only the judgment he hears from the Father, John 5, 30. That is what the Son speaks. Jesus said the Son can do nothing. John 5, 19. John 5, 19. Only what? He said the Father do the same the Son does. Faith, in other words, is you doing what God has done. But we talk, and that's why we lie. We talk on our own accord. He said, you don't know how to pray as you ought to. I've given you my spirit. The spirit will help you to pray as you ought to. But no, we have learned so many styles and methods of praying. There is no room for the Holy Spirit to fit in. That's not the plan of God. Allow the Holy Ghost to walk. As far as prayer is concerned, yours is to rest. You pray what he has prayed. You declare what he has declared. Ezekiel said, I prophesied as the Lord commanded me. I didn't just get up and start prophesying like many people prophesy these days without any utterance from the Lord, without any command. The scripture said, who has said and it come to pass if the Lord has not commanded. We are usurping the authority of God. That is why things are not working out the way they're supposed to work. We have to change our style. We have to change our method if we want to remain in the rest. He that enters the rest, cease to walk, cease to think, leave thinking for God. I know the thoughts I have concerning you, he says. They are thoughts of peace. They are not thoughts of evil. They are thoughts of peace that will enable you achieve your goals. So, Brethren, what I'm saying today is this. The Bible said, and they spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. The scripture said, in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. What did the Bible say in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13? Let's look at it and... Read them out. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, what does the scripture say? For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. He worketh in you to will. That's what the Bible said. And Jesus told the disciples, that when that spirit the Lord will send, will, his father will send, will come, he will teach you all things. Number two, he will bring to your remembrance all that I have taught you. The spirit will it in you to remember and to decide. And he enables you by doing it for you. He will it in you to will, for you to will and for you to do. So you contribute nothing. 
But brethren, this does not mean that we should fold our hand. Yes, we have entered into rest. You don't do anything as we see in some homes where the, 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 the breadwinner of the man is not doing anything. He left the body to the spouse. No, I'm not saying you should be lazy. God is not encouraging laziness. God hates laziness. God hates idleness. No, that you have entered the rest. No, it means, it means the Holy Spirit will begin to lead you. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. So entering his rest is allowing God to do the work while you rest. It's allowing God to give the command and you obey. It's allowing God to give the instruction and you obey. Your part is to obey. For you to remain in the rest, you must be an embodiment of obedience. Obedience to the word of God. And that will not come until you have decided to submit, to your, submit yourself to his lordship. Submit, to your, submit yourself to his sovereign will. That is when you could remain in that rest. As far as you are not submissive, it won't work out. What did Jesus say? Close that particular uh, Matthew chapter 11 wait. I want you to look at that place quickly before we round it up. Matthew chapter 11. In the book of Matthew chapter 11, that place ended with here. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall rest unto your, you will find rest unto your soul. Did you see it? You must learn to be humble. Many Christians are full of themselves, so proud. And when you are full of yourself, you are proud. And the Bible says God resists the proud. That's why many prayers are not answered. How are you praying to the person that is, is resisting you? It's not workable. They just learn to be meek. This thing work out when we are meek, when we are lowly. When we are submissive, total submission to Jesus Christ, let him be all in all. And whatsoever you do, you do it as unto the Lord, because it's the Lord who is doing it in actual fact, not you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Here we will take it. Glory be to God. Amen. It is well. Father, thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, sir. That was great. Uh, it's really wonderful for those who are coming at this time. It's timely. And the Lord calling every one of us to total submission so that we can have rest. There is a place of rest in God. And so we thank the Lord for the grace upon our Father's life. We're going to invite uh, our Apostle Align Todd to pray uh, in this word. Apostle Align Todd, are you online? Praise God, praise God. Amen. Shalom, shalom. The scripture says in Psalm 37, verses 7 and 8, Be still before the Lord, rest in the Lord, 
and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. Gracious King and Lord of Lords, we thank you for you brought us this far since Thursday to this hour. We thank you for how what we have heard. We thank you for how what we have learned. We thank you, Father in heaven, that yes, you've given us the courage not to be anxious, to put anxiety behind, to put worriness into silence, to trust in you, to stand firm in faith, to be still in the period of storm and waves of the world, to put our faith in you, upon your word, and to walk perfectly in your ways. Father in heaven, we pray that you help us according to what we have learned, according to what the scripture says, that we must be still to have a rest in you. We must be able to have the confidence, the reassurance that God, you are at work, whatever the situation and whatever the timing, if we have to wait for, our, for us to achieve or attain a desire for us to trust in you, knowing that you are God. Father in heaven, empower us by your Holy Spirit. Without your Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. But in it, all things are possible. Empower us, O oh Lord. Help our weakness, help our weariness, our tiredness, our unbelief. Help us, Lord, to put all fears behind and trust perfectly in you, to enjoy the rest that you have placed from the book of Genesis far to the book of Revelation, that the rest is in, is in you, Father in heaven. Empower us to do this in love, to love one another more the way that you have loved us, for us to continue to walk in unity, in harmony, in faithfulness, in righteousness, in purity of heart, for cleanliness of our hands, Father in heaven. May you help us by your grace, O oh Lord. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 God bless you, ma. Thank you for that prayer. And the word release continue. We want to welcome our mommy, Pastor. Dr. Mrs. Adeola Ilechiku, the child person to give us our word release. God bless you, ma. Is Dr. Aran? Technica, if you can help us to yes, spotlight. That's Dr. Mrs. Adeola Ilechuku, uh, the chair of the, uh, the Global oh. Governing Council. I want to believe that she's, yeah, she's here with us. Hallelujah. Thank you. We just want to hear from Dr. Mrs. Ilechuku. Those in the media, can you help us spotlight uh, Dr. Mrs. Ilechuku right yeah, away? Yeah. Just give her a minute. Okay. Okay. Prayer. Apostle Sunday, you can wait. Pray a word of prayer. I think she will come up in a minute. We are grateful to God <clears throat> for what we have heard so far. It's our prayer that God will begin to do his will. Mm -hmm. Because faith is doing what God has done. Mm -hmm. And we want to do what God has done. Mm -hmm. We want to rest from our labor. Mm -hmm. We don't want to uh, uh, continue to do what God is not doing. God, we want to take the rest and we want you to do the work like we have been told. Wherever we have displayed any act of unbelief, we pray tonight that God will put an end to unbelief. Even when we had not enough faith to continue, but we trust you because 
you abided faithful. You will not deny yourself and you will not deny the promises you have given to your people. And we are trusting you tonight that the rest you have called us into, we will enjoy it not only now, but for eternity. Lord, we thank you. As you begin to, to sanctify our hearts, as you begin to give us a more teachable spirit and understanding heart, Prepare us again to receive from you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, blessed God. Thank you, thank you for all the vessels that you have used so yes, far. Lord. And thank you for the much that is still going to come forth. Mm -hmm. I know that no one who have been part of this conference that will ever be the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think oh, we, are, we are really doing, we are doing well with time. Uh, Amen. Amen. Uh, before she comes in, we just take the song. We have come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Eh, eh, eh. We have mm -hmm. come to draw. Draw, draw, draw from you again. Hey, 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 hey. We have come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Hallelujah. Amen. That's excellent. We've come to draw from the Lord. Um, we do remember that we skip uh, Prophetess uh, Osa Bonnet from the United States. We don't know if she's on is is on now. Prophetess Osa Bonnet, if you are there while we are waiting for Dr. Mrs. Adeola Lechuku, can we have uh, Prophetess uh, Bonnet Hallelujah. from the United States? Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this wonderful conference. Open gates, war, yay! How many are excited to be in the presence of the Lord? Just start to worship God wherever you are. It's time to praise the almighty God, hallelujah. I'm going to give you a Shona song. It's called, uh, you are the Lord of Lords and we glorify your name, hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hakuna zita sera jeso kana no ku denga hakuna rime rakadaro zita rompo nesi. Hakuna zita sera Jesu kana noku una rime rakadaro zita tino naku i Opa biri no kuti hati zive zita rino kunda biri tino na ku imbira jeso. Tichi mupa biri no kuti hati zive sita rino kunda iri makatendeka Jesu makatendeka 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, that's a, that's a beautiful one from um, Prophet Bonnet also from the United States. Um, while we wait for uh, Dr. Um, Adeola Lechuku, uh, we just quickly bring in, uh, if she's not there, we're going to be bringing in the international president, Apostle George Akalonu very quickly, um, let's uh, spotlight our uh, international president. Amen, amen, thank you so much. Thank you, Apostle Sunday, we bless the Lord for you. Apostle Sunday and Pastor Gladys for, you know, anchoring the program very well. Uh, by the grace of the Lord, we thank the Lord for that awesome release by both Bishop Stafford and his wife, Pastor Tina, all the way from Oweri, the Jerusalem of IMF. We bless the Lord for that awesome time together and the all the moderators today you all done very well um we have invited dr diola and um uh, i think there's some uh, thing um uh, holding habit we are privileged that the the last ministry for today uh apostle debbie and apostle vance are available you know so Instead of waiting, we will take that ministry because Apostle Bans and Apostle Debbie, as you all know, their hands are full. And so we are privileged that they are here because they've indicated to me they may not be able to make it, to, they won't be able to make it tomorrow. So we have decided to give them an extended time. Instead of taking 10 minutes, Apostle Debbie, uh, Apostle Bans, Apostle Debbie will take 20 minutes to speak to us. And once more, by the grace of the Lord, I was pastoring in the city of Owerri, and in 1996, the Lord asked me to um, stop pastoring, that he was transitioning me to serve the body. He didn't create me to foster denominations. 1996, it was a very, one of the toughest decisions of my life to, you know, a, a ministry where I had great opportunities, you know, rising in the ranks, and I went to my leaders and sent them a note that, by the grace of the Lord, the Lord wants me to serve the body in his kingdom, and I wanted to be released. So August, the Lord released us four and a half years later, in the year 2001, and this May will be 20, 21 years. Apostle Vance and Apostle David came into our life. Not only did they start what is now International Missus Fellowship, but they mentored us personally. Pastor Grace and I were privileged to have the mentoring, uh, spend good time with them in their home in Austin, in, their, in the church in Austin, you know, went around, you know, we, we did some, a whole lot of things together. And, um, you know, in a, a great sense, everybody believed and without any shadow of doubt that, uh, you know, Apostle George and Pastor Grace you know, received that which the Lord took them to bring to Africa. And we're grateful. Most of what we do now is simply an expansion of that understanding of the fivefold the Lord used them to bring to the church in Oweri. The, 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 the priesthood of all believers, the saints movement, Apostle Vance and Apostle David themselves are, you know, they have a, their own uh, mentor who, has been, they've been with him for years, I think 30 years or more. Bishop Bill Hammond, the father of the prophetic movement worldwide, Bishop Bill Hammond. And he's a man under authority. And I believe part of it had to, why he had to give up IMF, you know, what is now IMF was because there was also the need for him in the network that, you know, his own spiritual covering was over, which is the, the biggest in the world, Christian International. Apostle Vance has been not just an influence, the impact has been very defining, so much so that there's no way all our lifetime we can forget that factor. So please join me to receive 
the, the overseers of Arise Ministries International in Austin, Texas. You know, Apostle Debbie doesn't seem to age uh, <laughs> all these years. He just <laughs> received Apostle Debbie and Apostle Vance. You're welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, no. Well, George, thank, thank you, Apostle George. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we hear it well. Thank you, Apostle George. Well, you know, when we passed off the uh, network to uh, you and Cosmos, didn't have any idea what God had in store for me and Apostle Debbie. And, and we just were being obedient, just like we have tried all of our lives. And now, uh, under Bishop Bill Hammond, uh, Debbie and I are the Western Region Leaders for Christian International. And we uh, take care of everything west of the Mississippi, all of the Western states of America, uh, Africa, I mean, uh, Alaska and um, Hawaii and Fiji Islands. And I mean, we're just busy, 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 but it's okay. God's doing a good thing and we're pleased with that. Uh, we're, but more importantly, we're so excited about the fact that we're still part of IMF. We'll never ever not be part of IMF. And more importantly, you as our son, we see you as our son, literally. And uh, people ask me all the time, how can you have a black son? I say, I don't know, it's part of the miracle of God. But <laughs> you're just as much a son to me and Apostle Debbie as anyone. And uh, your family, so precious, uh, Grace and all the little children. They're not little anymore, are they, Apostle George? They've grown up. They're now men and women. And uh, it's, it's really amazing. Go ahead, baby. I was so surprised years ago when, um, when Vance came and said he felt inclined to go to Africa. And I'm like, you're going where? And he said, to <laughs> Africa. Don't you want to go? And I'm like, I don't think so. And that first trip that he made uh, was like an uncharted journey. And we had no idea what to expect. Um, we only knew uh, uh, Benjamin who, Nyacho. and Yacho, whom Vance went with. Uh, he was the only person we had connection with. And, and I can tell you, um, I think it was during the times when we had to use satellite phones. And I worried while Vance was gone. I was concerned. He had never been that far away from home. But, you know, it was a God journey. It was, it was the beginning of something that we could never have imagined. Um, we, we didn't know God was going to take us down this road, but we are so thankful every day. We are so thankful for our connection with IMF. We are, we are um, forever bound to Apostle George and, and Pastor Grace and all those that we have fallen in love with over the years. Uh, you warm our hearts. You touch us daily. We pray for you every day. We know that God has his hand on this, um, this network, and there are greater things to come. Uh, I just feel like, and I think that, that every year has been a launching site, a launching pack had for you all as you've grown and you've become more connected, you've become more influential. But I just see that this year that there's something that is unusual that God is going to do with the network. Um, it's beyond being interconnected. It's beyond um, uh, network. It's beyond organization. It's something that God is going to release in, the, in, in this body of believers in this connectedness, God's going to do something extraordinary. And, uh, you know, there's, we think about Elijah in a still small voice when God spoke to, to him, God is speaking and we have to tune our ears to hear him. And it's most of the time it's in that still small voice. And so sometimes we don't get the big um, thunder, thunder and the lightning when God speaks, but he's going to speak a word to you, Apostle George, about the network and about just some shifts that you're going to make that's going to a better cause, um, uh, a, I don't want to say notoriety, but some coverage, some more influence that you're going to receive. It's going to be just a word that if you're not listening closely, you're going to miss. 
So this is gonna be an extraordinary year for the network. More coming, uh, more people are going to be touched, more people are going to be released into ministry. And this, is, this will be 2022 with all of its restrictions that we're dealing with. It's going to be one of the finest years. Over the next seven years, you're gonna see it's going to be like a dyna dynamo. It's going to be like dynamite in the midst of your ministry. So we just bless you today and know that, that all those who are connected are blessed because the blessings come from the head. Yeah, and Apostle George, uh, what the Lord spoke to me while Apostle Debbie was ministering, you know, she has a unique ministry. She ministers out of the spirit of relationship more than anything, and I love that about her, but while she was ministering uh, to you and IMF, I heard the Lord say that he's going to uh, speak to you about his presence. I know you talk a lot about the presence of the Lord, and uh, I know you have a heart for the presence of the Lord, but there's going to be a cascading effect that's going to take place throughout the IMF network where people uh, throughout IMF are going to begin to realize the importance of the presence of God. And the thing that is upsetting to me personally, uh, not about IMF, but about the body of Christ at large, uh, is that in many cases, the presence of God is vacant. It's just not available in churches. Uh, there's too much uh, uh, charisma that's attached to the pastor. There's too many uh, uh, fog machines and too many light shows during worship. Uh, it's looking more like a nightclub than it is a church. And what I hear the Lord saying, he's going to bring us back to the basics of Christianity, back to the basics of worship. And I heard the Lord say, uh, Apostle George, he said, son, tell my, my son, tell my son, George, that I'm going to move powerfully in his midst and I'm going to create a situation where my anointing is going to be so prevalent that it's going to literally cause him and those that are associated with him to be dumbfounded. It's almost like, uh, you know, when God moved in Exodus chapter 19 for the first time and the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, and it was the first time that God came to Moses and said, look, I want to I want to move among my people, and Moses went to the people and said, I want to move among, God wants to move among you. He wants to have a relationship with you, and the people didn't accept it, and it's what I call the Moses syndrome. It's where people become so uh, enveloped in fear of the Almighty that they they lose connection with him and, and they said to Moses, No, you go to the mountain, you have relationship with the Lord, and you have interaction with him, and then you bring it down to us and we'll be safe. We'll we'll enjoy that. And the Lord told me, He said, I'm going to turn that around for IMF. I'm going to turn it around for George and I'm going to show him that each and every individual in IMF are going to have to forge that mountain to come before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and have that relationship. You know, George, I'm all about intimacy with the Lord. You know, I've talked about that for 30 years and I won't stop talking about it. I, I had a young man come to me one day and he said, Apostle Vance, one thing I can say about you is that you never change your message. And I said, son, it's a message God gave me, and I will never abandon it. It's vitally important. But God's going to do something uh, in you, for you, and through you that's going to be so amazing, and it's going to bless and touch those that are part of IMF in a profound way. And the Lord says, son, even that apostolic anointing that's in you that you carry is getting ready to come to a whole other dimension of authority and might. And Apostle Debbie touched on it, and I'll be quiet and let her minister ahead, some more. But, but the, the, it, the thing that I see for you, George, is that God's getting ready to elevate you even more than ever before. And there's going to be TV programs that are going to want to have you on so that you can talk to them about what's going on throughout the world. And God says, even where there's about I think you have, what, about 32 nations now in IMF, is that correct? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a doubling of that effect. And the authority of what IMF represents, I never saw this when I first began AMI Africa. I didn't see it to this degree, but now I'm beginning to get the full vision of it. There is so much might and power in relationship with the Lord and relationship with one another. And you're going to be a voice for the body of Christ that's going to be able to share that. And it's going to change the entire environment of the body of Christ worldwide, says the Spirit of God. Go ahead, Dave. And I just saw that God's going to bring more and more um, people. Like They look like foot soldiers, and God is creating an army with the IMF um, network. And as you continue to train, as you continue to um, uh, cause people to grow and to uh, embrace what he, God is saying as they become more like Christ themselves. You're going to see that mighty army uh, just rise up. I just see them taking Africa for Jesus Christ from the top to the bottom, from every, uh, every aspect of Africa. I can see that God is going to do a, a mighty work through IMF. And you've had influence in, in with IMF in Africa, but nothing like you were going to, you're going to see in the next 12 months. I believe that God's going to use you. Not only uh, Apostle Vance touched on the uh, uh, television, but in all areas of media. I know that you were such a huge proponent of using Facebook at first. And, and I, am, I am a social media shy person. And so I struggle. I struggle even to post on Facebook. I just struggle never with, don't want to put my picture. I'm just, I'm just not that, that way. But God used you to forge a way for IMF. And there are other um, venues that he's going to use in the next several years that's going to be innovative it's going to be um, something that will shift people into thinking and getting out of the old expecting the old um, we know we know last year when we had to go uh, uh, virtual for uh, several months uh, we had a love-hate relationship with it but we believe during that time that we touched more people during that season and did more for the kingdom than we've probably ever done before. And then at that point, we had to make a shift and say, we're doing, we're doing live on, on social media as well as doing our service. And that has been a blessing to us. But I see God using you in just different ways. He's also going to bring you... Um, more and more talented people to come around about you to shore you up and to keep your arms raised and not weary and um, you're going to see that that whatever you need is coming whatever you ask for god's going to bring those talents to you he's going to bring those with uh, anointing to you and uh, you're going to be scattered throughout the world in this next season i see asia being just bombarded with the word of the Lord and by uh, those who you are going to send. So this is a season to rejoice. This is a season to be thankful and not be, um, not be stymied, not be, uh, uh, don't put on the brakes, put on, put your foot on the accelerator and go like never before. None of us are getting old or younger. We're getting older. And it, this is the time to do it. It, it. We can't sit back and wait for another time. We can't sit back and say, we'll do it another day. This is the time to give everything we have to run our race and to finish the course. And Apostle George, I do have one final word for you and then we'll, we'll end. But I heard the Lord say that he's expanding the prophetic anointing in your life. And, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of people that don't comprehend the prophetic. They don't understand it. But you're going to be a voice for the prophetic that's going to bring direction and it's going to bring uh, encouragement like never before. And the Lord says, son, as you begin to open your mouth, it'll be almost like Isaiah the prophet speaking. <laughs> I know all of these words seem very elevated, but I'm, I'm just, I wish that I could convey the power and the anointing that God has extended to you. It's family. It's, 
I mean, what God's done through Pastor Grace, for an example. George, when we first came to Africa, there were no women ministers. They were all home making babies and cleaning the house. But now look, there are ministers that are women. Your wife is a pastor. She carries a prophetic mantle. Then there are people in Africa now that are prophets and teachers and evangelists and all kinds of pastors. I mean, it's remarkable. Why? Because the Lord found fertile ground in you. And then it began to grow and expand. God says, get ready, son. It's getting ready to expand in an even greater way. You're going to be greatly appreciative are appreciated throughout all of the nations of the world. And the Lord says, you will have that voice. And God says, where you've been timid in the past to stand up and prophesy, I'm going to impart to you boldness to begin to move by faith. And signs, wonders, and miracles will follow your ministry as you begin to prophesy and as you begin to put your apostolic foot on nations, God says, I'm going to use you in a mighty way, says the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. 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 We received that. Apostle Vance, two things I want to request. One, I would like you to pray over the all the global governing council, the global executive, the national presidents and leaders here. We all raise our hands and you just release an impartation. The second one is to request you to pencil down May 13 to 15. That's 21 years you step your feet at Africa. So we're going to have the Global Apostolic and Prophetic Summit, May 13 to 15, to mark those 21 years you came to Oweri. So part of the meeting will be live in Oweri and part will be online. So you minister online, uh, both of you. So if you kindly jot down 13 to 15 May, uh, you know, and so that we can, uh, we, we, we will have you just speak from Austin. So there'll be a connection, Austin to Oweri. Oweri live, Austin live, and in between, in between the world, you know. Wonderful. So, love it, I'll, love it. I like all the, all the members of the Global Governing Council that are here, Elaine, come and help me. Wherever you are, please, can we have the, um, yeah. Oh, I like it to prophesy about this also. Lord, I thank you so much for this IMF. What you've done with IMF is remarkable. I pray over all of the members of IMF, all of the leadership, I impart to them an anointing, God, of intimacy with you and relationship with one another. It's very simple. It's just not complicated. Very simple to desire to have a relationship with you and to relate with one another. Matthew chapter seven, seven through nine says, ask, seek, and knock. Well, Lord, we're asking and we're seeking and we're knocking and I declare a miracle over the world for IMF. I'm not talking about just a section. I'm declaring and decreeing and prophesying the place that IMF will be a touch point throughout all of the world and it will confront Islam and it will confront other false religions and IMF will win the battle, Lord. There's going to be a transition even now in the spirit realm where you're even manifesting your presence in, in Muslims' lives and they're changing from Islam to Christianity. And Lord, there is a dividing mark within Nigeria where the North is Islam or Muslim and the South is Christian. Well, Lord, I declare that Nigeria will be taken over with Christianity and there will be conversion after conversion to Christianity. And that where there have been those that have tried to promote Islam, God, they will be converted themselves. And that Holy Spirit, you begin to move through the leadership of IMF, and I rebuke any form of disunity, 
any form of discord, anything, Lord, that would try to put man above the Spirit of God, I command that to come down by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I ask, mighty God, that this network would be uh, dedicated to you, 100% converted over to you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, just like you've done with Apostle George. I declare this now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I pray over every leader, Lord, within the network. I thank you, Father, for all that they do for you and for your kingdom. I just ask, Lord, for more anointing, for more power over everyone. Lord, more connectedness with one another, more uh, relationship, Lord, even within their families. I ask, Lord, that wherever they live, that they become a hub of influence for your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, that you've taken care of them, Lord, physically, financially, emotionally, and Lord, that you have put a hedge of protection around about them and around about their family. Lord, let them do more in 2022 than they've ever done before. Let this be a year of victory. Lord, let them go from mountaintop to mountaintop. Lord, bless them with divine connections divine assignments lord let uh, let lord favor come upon them let your rains lord fall upon them and soak them lord with your favor this year lord let them see signs wonders and miracles lord in their lives and in the lives of those that are around about them we bless them today. We bless apostle George and pastor Grace. We bless their precious children. And Lord, they are the seed of, 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 of um, Pastor Grace's womb. And I declare, Lord, that they will rise up and be men and women of God, that they will minister, Lord, even more so than Apostle George and uh, Pastor Grace have done, and that they will be remarkable. They will be renowned, Lord, in their love for you and in their ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Apostle Vance and Apostle Debbie. What an unexpected blessing. Uh, <laughs> you know, so this is a this is divine ambush, you know. This is this is <laughs> You know when I, when the Lord ambushes you, you you cannot bear. We this is this is huge. This is huge, and <laughs> this is coming at a time. Divine Amen. This is coming at a time that truly, you know, you are spot on. The network is just on the cups of something that has not been imagined. It's beyond imagination, and uh, that the Lord is launching us out to the six continents simultaneously. Um, and the Lord is raising people who are willing to go. So this speaking into this phase is huge. And 21 years is a, is a number of maturity across the world. When somebody gets to 21, he's no longer a child. He's, he's ready for everything, everything. So coming from you at this, very point is something very significant and we we receive it in in its fullness we receive the word and we believe that by this time when we get it again if the lord carries we'll have more than enough testimonies to testify of the accuracy of the prophetic release that we receive today brothers and sisters the lord has blessed us exceptionally you know i know how busy their schedule is if you know ci is such a huge network that to be the western regional you know directors west of the mississippi all the way across america all the way to alaska all the way to hawaii and all those states west of the mississippi that is really huge and we thank the Lord, Apostle Vance, Apostle Debbie, we received the word you've released. We are grateful to the Lord for having you in our lives. Amen, amen, amen. I think it would be very worthwhile for us to just take a worship song now. Uh, where is uh, Minister Hadiza, Mr. 
Helen, Miss Hadiza, Miss Helen, with can you all just uh, raise a song that we can you know, with just a song of worship, a worship song is, is very appropriate. Now, thank you, Apostle Sunday. This was not planned, Apostle Sunday. You know, I think it was the Holy Spirit that moved on your heart, uh, and Apostle uh, Pastor Gladys, you know, for uh, coming forth to ask me to step forward to introduce them. Uh, is uh, Mr. Hadiza, Mr. Helen around? Amen. Amen. I'm here, yes. sir. Yes, please. We stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. We stand amazed in your presence. Hallelujah. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're the faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're the faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're the faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're the faithful God. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our time is fast spent. And by the grace of the Lord, um, our time is fast spent. Um, apparently, Dr. Elechu is not around. And uh, uh, I understand, Minister. And I'm going to hand over to Apostle. But before then, I just want to do something we do in IMF. What we do is that the Saturday night we raise an offering for the elders of the house. Uh, so, you know, by the grace of the Lord, that's so that we bless the elders, the, the governing council, we bless the elders. We're not going to do it now. We're going to ask you if you, I believe all of you have the details, the account details, you know, when you get home and you can then prayerfully sow something with which we used to bless the elders at the end of open gates, you know, and we'll announce the figure if we stable. I don't want you to, I don't want to delay the meeting. I just been reminded we've done 11 minutes above the time, but this was not planned. You can see that this is Holy Spirit overtook us to speak into where we are going. Amen. So if I believe all of you have the account details, what you're going to do, this is a seed you're going to say seed of honor or S-O-H, seed of honor. You put it so that they know in the various accounts, if we get the report by tomorrow as what is in the bank, we know. And by Monday or so, we, we ask the finance department to just put it together and bless the elders of the house. Is it a good thing to do, brethren? Yes, sir. Amen. So, so we won't delay you. We we'll just say, you know, as if you needed any, Louis Pastor uh, Apostle Colade, the treasurer Apostle Colade, Akin, you can talk with him if you need the information. We don't want to delay yes, for that. I hand over back to Pastor Gladys and Apostle Sunday to call the person to do the opening prayer, uh, closing prayer. Hallelujah. Yes, so remember tomorrow. Okay, she will make the announcement. Okay, okay. Right. hallelujah. God bless you, sir. That was wonderful. I hope every one of us has enjoyed ourselves all through today. By the message of God, we have been able to go through four sessions. It can only be the Lord. And so we thank him for his faithfulness. We thank him 
for his word. No wonder the psalmist say in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And I know every one of us have received from the Lord today. And so we're going to invite our minister Anne Watson to make the announcement and also say the closing prayer. God bless every one of you. And thank you for having us to coordinate this evening session. God bless you. Amen, amen. God bless you. Um, a few announcements for, to, for tomorrow. Um, anyone, uh, I would encourage everyone to go to the website and download the message of Dr. Cosmos and, um, and to let you all know that tomorrow we're gonna have two sessions and that um, the uh, website uh, is www.imfministers.com and that prayer will start tomorrow at 1 p.m. UK time, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time and 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Amen. And I thank you all for coming today. I thank you all for uh, for the last four sessions that we've had. And I look forward to tomorrow for the last two sessions. And I pray that you all have a wonderful evening. But let me pray us out. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for this wonderful day, Lord God, in your presence, Lord. We thank you, Father, for all that transpired, Lord. We thank you for every person, Lord God, that participated, Lord, every praise and worship team, Lord God, all of the Global Governing Council, Lord God, as they brought forth your word, Lord God, with truth, Lord God, so that we, Lord God, will be able, Lord God, to enter into your rest, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that in that also, Lord God, we have learned, Lord God, that we are to continue in brotherly love, Lord God. And not only that, Lord God, we are better together, Lord. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, for all that's happened today. And I look forward, Lord God, as we all do, Lord God, with expectation for tomorrow, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord. And we just want to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord God, for what you've done in this, in this day, Lord. And we thank you for that. In Yeshua Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Let's just share the grace in fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 H